What's going on everybody? Swanee here. Welcome back to uh, Train Simulator. Uh, I haven't done one of these in a while uh, as far as just kind of doing a cab ride, just maybe a scenario or not. But uh, I think we're going to do one today. Uh, we're on Pacific Surfliner. We got the Dash 8 Amtrak uh, with uh, the Audio Shack sound pack, which sounds pretty awesome. Be sure to go check that out. Uh, this is just a standard one off the workshop. It's, uh, I forget what the guy's name is that makes it. I'll link it in the description. But, uh, I'm gonna try to do this mostly without the HUD today. And I think that's pretty. I'll probably use it a little bit just to check. I'm gonna use it just to check, like, where our stations are and speed restrictions, but I think we can do most of this without it. Let's go ahead and get ourselves out of here. This is the third part of the scenario. It's a three-part one. It starts in LA. Second one goes through. It stops at Oceanside. This one's going uh, all the way to uh, San Diego. So that's what we're working on today. But this thing, man, these sound packs are freaking sweet. You can listen to it. This is uh, it's a, it has a quillable horn, so you can go. That's and that's pretty sweet. It sounds very good. Let's go ahead and get ourselves out of here a little bit. Ooh, we got a nice little coaster coming at us. The coaster repaint. This game's just this game's just so much better when you have like a good sound set to go with the game. I don't I don't know. It's just I don't know. Let me just guys think about that. I mean, I think it's I think it's super important with add-ons just to get the sounds right. And I think it's something that that dovetails kind of lacked. something that they've lacked a little bit uh, but it's good to know that there are people out there that make uh, you know add-ons and this is again this is a payware one you can obviously there's freeware uh, there's free on there's freeware sound sound packs you can get and stuff on the on like railworks America and stuff like that but in my opinion there's nothing really that beats uh, nothing really that beats a, a payware a sound pack so Like the reason why I picked number three too is because there's uh, going to San Diego. There's a lot more crossings. There's nothing like blowing a horn on, on a train. It's just a great feeling. Again, I was. Uh, if you guys have kind of watched other train videos uh, that I've made. Um, I think it was the first one I made. I, I was talking about how I was able to do engineer for a day over at Roaring Camp, which is a uh, which is a uh, a tourist train over here in Santa Cruz, California. That has a uh, the Rins Shea locomotives, and uh, I got to do engineer for a day, and it was it was honestly an amazing uh, amazing experience. Getting to drive getting to drive an old steam engine, get to bl blow a whistle. I mean it's. It's fun to do in a game, but when you can do it in real life, it's even better. Let's get a couple more notches of power going. I think that's full power right there. On this one, it sounds better from the outside, to be honest. I kind of like the way it sounds uh, before you even blow the full horn. It's kind of just where it's quilled. It sounds like it sounds pretty good. 
it almost is almost it's almost a little too loud to where it kind of gets distorted a little bit but all right so we're still at 90 we got 11 miles to go Apologies if my game's a little bit laggy at some points. I don't really know why. I mean, I've got, a, honestly, a crazy PC that should have no problem running this game at full settings. And and I haven't really, up until like the last couple times I've tried to play it, and I'm not really sure. Uh, I know there's like a, a forum on the on the, on the the Steam that you can kind of explain how to increase RAM and stuff like that so you can get it to run better. I need to do it at some point, but if there's little stutters and stuff, I apologize. I'll tell you what though, I mean, I used to play this on my, on my laptop from work, and it was, I mean, I was running like 9 frames per second on the lowest settings possible, and it was, it was pretty terrible, like, I don't even know how I was able to play it. Yeah, I don't know how I was able to play it, I mean, literally, it was... It literally took twice as long to do a scenario just because it literally took twice as long. The, the, when you're, I mean, if you think about it, an average game runs at what, 30 frames per second? So anything below that, you're essentially not running at a full speed. So when you're, especially at half of that, it means it takes twice as long to do everything. So you can imagine how frustrating that was. And obviously you couldn't even see anything. It was super unclear. So this is definitely a step up. Oh my, that was a big one right there. So if you guys haven't checked out the channel, be sure to go check it out. I do a lot of train sim stuff. I do some max plane. I do uh, some truck sim. I just recently started getting into Transport Fever as well as uh, Planet Coaster and stuff like that. There's there's other games that I played too, uh, but that's kind of what I've been into at the moment. I'm a, I'm a big believer just kind of playing whatever I feel like playing and just sharing it. I, I don't think I believe in like schedules and stuff like that. That's, that makes it not fun, but. Uh, be sure to go check that out. What I've been doing with my train sim recently is, uh, is, uh, I've been, uh, sorry, I keep losing train of thoughts here. Uh, what I've been doing is kind of steering away from scenarios, and I used to, I used to do them a lot, but, uh, I've been doing a lot of, like, rail fanning videos with train sim recently, and they've been, They've been honestly doing pretty well. Uh, it's kind of nice because they, I put a lot of work into them, so it's kind of nice to see that people are actually watching them and enjoying them. But be sure to go check those out. Those are really cool. What, what, I, what I am doing is, is I, you know, rail fan with the game as most people would do, but then I kind of take it a step farther and I go through and I edit in real sounds over the gameplay. So, you know, it takes a long time to figure out which clips are going to work for it and you know how to make them fit at the right time so everything sounds right but it's literally uh it's literally awesome it makes it like a million times better it's a really cool thing so you're gonna be sure to check them out i got right now i got ones for amtrak i got some freight trains and i also have socal trains those are my three i i, I plan on doing like one I, I i'd like to do one every week but i feel like i would run out of things to do pretty quickly and i think that uh i don't know i mean they take, a, like I said, they take a really long time to make. Let's go down a little bit here. So, I don't know. I mean, they are fun to make. The end result's really nice, but uh, it is kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. So, I'll try to do them as when I, when I can, when I kind of feel when the mood to do it. But I think if we can get one, like one out a week or one out every other week, that's, I mean, that should be fine. I think my next one, I'm, I'm kind of stuck between two ideas. I, I want to do steam trains. Um, and the only problem I've had with it so far is that there aren't enough like steam engines in the US to like really use in this game. I think I have like, I have the, you know, the 844, the Union Pacific FEF 3, which is, that's the same locomotive. I have, uh, I have the, the daylight, I have, uh, what else is there? There's... I have the Consolidation. You 
consolidation. I have like the Spokane, whatever, SPS one and the, I also have the nickel plate road. So there's a couple, um, let's get ourselves slowed down a little bit here. Got an 80 speed restriction popping up here shortly. I think that we, we can make it if we just go idle here. Throw a little bit of break in. There's a sign right there. There we go. So yeah, so I mean, there's stuff. I also have a Shea that I bought from Brit Kits, and uh, it's okay. It's not. It's not like. Um, hold on. It's not, uh, it has like no road plates or road names on it or anything. It's blank, which kind of sucks. And I'm not really sure how to reskin stuff. Uh, so, I mean, I, the, the whole idea of these are be, it's trying to be super realistic, right? And when there's only so many engines you have and a lot of them, I don't know how to reskin, it kind of takes away from making it as realistic as I'd like it to be. So that's kind of the issues I've run into with that. I think it'd be really cool. Uh, so maybe I'll do it. I don't know. I mean, as long as people can look past the thing that it can't be as realistic as this time as it should, and it's, we're just kind of we're gonna um, enjoy it for the sounds and stuff like that, then I guess it's worth doing. But my other option would be a route specific or route specific like video. I, I don't know. Maybe like a the racetrack or Stevens Pass or something like that. Let me know what you guys think about that. If you guys, if you have a preference on what you want to see, I'm curious to see what you guys think about that. All right, so where are we at? We got about two miles. That's about as well. I think we're getting close. I'm gonna throw this on. want to start twitching guys I, I'm getting there like I, I'm getting the urge to do some live streaming and I don't know I'm, I'm lacking some materials for it I still need to get like a, a webcam I still need to get like a better mic I mean a better mics like I, it's, it's a need like now to be honest like I mean this one works but like it just doesn't have the quality that I that I want it to have I think that's just one thing that's kind of important that a lot of people don't have oh, we got a sign here 70 Oh yeah. Gotta get down to 60 actually. Let's double check again. 60, 70, okay. We're all right. Not to worry. So right before we get for this turn, we gotta get down to 60. I think we'll make it. Let's just switch in tracks here, which we are. That's fine. I think we're okay. Start accelerating again. But yeah, I'm getting that itch to start streaming. Like I really, really, really want to do it. Uh, my other issue is, is that like I'm in an apartment with a bunch of other people and our, our internet's pretty good, but, but where I'm at, I'm not next to the router. So I'm going wireless off my PC right now, which is, works fine for uploading and daily and stuff like that but I think for streaming I don't think it's going to be able to cut it so I'm worried that like I wouldn't be able to get the quality that that I would want out of it but for, for situations like this like gameplay like this where we're just going along a route we're just hanging out just riding along or flying or whatever when there's downtime like having the community around right then to kind of like talk and just kind of pass the time would be amazing I think it's just kind of these games these kind of sims and games are kind of set up for that I mean I'd love to do it at some point in the near future I mean it's it's in my it's on my definitely on my uh it's definitely on my list of things to do like it's gonna happen but I'd hate to like do it half-assed
All right, so we're rolling along here. Uh, shoot. Hold on a sec. Whoops. <laughs> Real smooth on that. I don't know if you guys caught that. So I was like two miles away. Remember when I said last time, and I was supposed to, uh, supposed to pick up passengers, and I did not do that. Son of a bitch. Well, I guess these guys are taking the bus. Where are we at? Alright, so we need to get down to 50. Pretty soon here. Going along the beach. Now I've ridden this in real life. Well, not not down the San Diego, but I've ridden uh, the Coast Starlight from LA up to you know San Jose where I live, and this was how like three or four hours of the ride was. Literally just like this close. We were actually closer to the ocean in some parts, but man, it was an awesome, awesome, awesome experience. Awesome uh, sight to see. You know, it was just almost oh, start slower. We're getting ourselves sped back up. It's a lot harder to play this game when you're trying to commentate, that's for sure. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, it was a really cool, really cool experience. I think the train was like, it was like nine or ten hours long. Uh, but it, it was, it was fun. I was down in LA for a hockey tournament, and uh, unfortunately, one of my uh, teammates that gave me a ride down there got stuck down there for some reason. I think he needed to do something personal or something like that, and he couldn't give me a ride back, so. Uh, a couple, me and a couple of my buddies that were on the team, we decided that we wanted to take the train back up, and uh, it was it was fun. We we got a, you know, we had dinner in the in the dining car, and, you know, we got to look over the ocean as we ate dinner, and we kind of just hung out and walked around and checked out all the cars and stuff like that. It was it was cool. It was cool. I mean, it was a it was a good experience. I actually ended up, uh, I actually ended up going up to Seattle probably a year after that. Uh, with my girlfriend, her and I took the train up to Seattle, and that was a, that was even a longer trip. That was like 24 hours, and uh, it's still the Coast Starlight, it's still the same thing. And that one was cool. It didn't have any ocean views. Um, this one kind of went through the middle of Central California up to like Sacramento and stuff like that. Uh, the coolest part I think that I saw was when we were going through Shasta. Fuck. I think the coolest part that we uh, that we went through was we went through Mount Shasta and stuff like that, and that was like right when we woke up. I think we were going through there like at 6 a.m. in the morning, and I happened to be up. I don't think I slept very well on the train to be honest, and uh, and it was it was cool. I mean, it was uh, we went through Portland. That was pretty cool too, and then we went up to Seattle, and that was it was fun. I went up there to see my dad, stuff like that, and then we ended up taking it back and. You know, 24 hours on a train really doesn't go... It's not as bad as you think. It's not really that long. Because most of the time, it's through the night anyway, so you'd be sleeping. Um, I do recommend getting a sleeping car. We were in the coach, and and the seats do, like, fold down all the way, and you can sleep in them and stuff like that, and you still get dinner reservations. But, like, in the sleeper car, you kind of get your own little space. Um, and it's just more secure. I mean, I guess... I don't think I was ever like really nervous when I was on the train that something was going to happen but like being like in an open situation where all your bags are right next to you and you're sleeping and there's people that are like around you and that get off the train when you're not paying attention like it's just it's kind of like set up for something to go wrong I guess you could say but it's not that I don't trust people I just I don't trust people <laughs> but uh, anyway no so it was I think next time I would do it I'd probably do a sleeper car just to get your own space, and I think the meals are included and stuff like that, so it, it makes more sense. But if you guys ever, uh, if you guys haven't traveled by rail yet, like gone somewhere far on travel by train, I highly, highly, highly recommend doing it. Like, it's honestly a really, really cool thing to do. Like, when you're flying in on an airplane, 
or even driving in a car. If you're flying on an airplane, you're, you're seeing stuff from 40,000 feet or 35,000 feet above, you know, the ground. And it looks cool. That's a cool perspective. I'm not going to lie. But you're not getting, like, that sense of going through, like, canyons and over rivers and, you know, through tunnels and mountains and going along the oceans. You're not, like, there. You're not seeing it. Now, if you're in a car, you can, sometimes you can see the same things. But then you have to worry about driving and paying attention versus when you're on a on a train – you're just kind of kicking back and relaxing and someone else is doing it for you. So it's a really cool experience. Um, there are a couple of places like, uh, that, that offer like private rail cars to get back on the, that go on the back of Amtrak trains. I know there was one on our train when we went and that kind of is aimed at giving you like a first class experience, kind of like it would be like back in the fifties when they had actual like, uh, legit passenger trains. And that's like it was like the standard back then. Now it's kind of just people try to do it cheap and it's economic, which it actually isn't really that cheap. But uh, no, I think I think that'd be cool too. You know, what? I'm kind of glad we didn't stop there. To be honest. I mean, just keeping things moving here. It's not like we're getting graded or anything. We're running the express train. Oceanside straight to San Diego. No stops. ourselves up into Miramar here. We're going to go up through the hills and back down the other side into San Diego. So we're almost there. We're getting close. I'll tell you one thing that uh, I was, I was, I had planned to do, which was, which was really cool is they had a, I was mentioning that they had that place that does the private rail cars and stuff like that. They set up an excursion for the Santa Fe 3571 or 37, 3751. I don't know. It was one of those, one of the ways around. I forget how they do it, but it was a, it was like a mainline steam engine that Santa, that was used on the Santa Fe railway back in the old days, I guess. And, uh, and I, I guess every now and again, they'd use excursions. They do excursions with it. And, uh, they had set one up from LA down to San Diego, which is exactly this Pacific Surf Rider run. It's the exact same thing. And it was going all the way down there and all the way back, and you get to go in private rail cars, like the ones from the California Zephyr with, those, with the dumb cars and all that stuff like that. And it was a... Uh, it, it really it wasn't even that much money. I mean, it, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this is not a lot of money, but for what it was, it wasn't a lot of money. I think it was like... Uh, like $400 a person for a whole day's worth of trips, and that's, that's six hours of train travel behind a behind a steamer that you probably would never be able to ride behind you know what i mean and on an on an average day obviously you can't but anyway but my, my point is is that it was a really cool idea and like i was really interested in it so i bought tickets for it and i bought tickets that were going to take the train from san jose down to la stay in la across from the train station and jump on the train in la and take it down to san diego kind of walk around downtown a little bit get back on the train stay the night and then come back up the next day so that was the plan and I remember like it was it was like really close to my birthday I think it was like in sometime in October and I was like super super excited and like and then like I think it was like two months before that they I got a letter saying it got canceled because BNSF uh didn't approve the lease to use the railroad because I guess it was got in the way of the regular scheduled trains and stuff like that and they couldn't do it so it's kind of bullshit but like I don't know. It was, it, it would have been really cool. I think the chances to ride trains like that, behind lo old steam locomotives on mainline, is definitely going away. I mean, there's a lot of restrictions nowadays and stuff like that. And unfortunately, you know, it's 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 just kind of the way it is. But if you ever get a chance to ride behind a big steam engine like that on a mainline or an excursion like that, I you know I recommend doing it just because you never know when you're not gonna be able to do it anymore. So. Unfortunately, that didn't work out. I always keep my eye on the site, though. I think it's called railtrips.biz or traintrips.biz. Traintrips.biz. I'll put the link in the description. They got a lot of tours. A lot of them are like in Europe and stuff like that. But they had that one, and then they also have, you know, the excursions like I was talking about earlier, where they put the private rail cars behind the Amtrak trains, and you can ride on those. So it's cool to always keep your eye out. You never know what it's gonna do. And. 
I got another another trip that I was looking at was they had a they had a trip for all like the steam uh, museums and stuff like that like that are in Colorado like the like the Durango and Silverton and the uh, the Cumbers and Tolick and the Georgetown Loop and uh, the Nevada State Railroad Museum. They had this whole trip planned where you fly out to Denver and you do all this stuff in Colorado. You, t- you jump on the, an Amtrak train. I forget if it's the California Zephyr. I think it's the California Zephyr. And you jump on the California Zephyr and you get off in uh, Reno, I think. And, and then you do a bunch of stuff in Nevada. And then you... I think you jump back on the train again and you go back to San Francisco and then you do stuff around the Bay Area. Go up to Lake Yosemite and do some trains up there. You go to Jamestown and do the... Uh, there's a museum there that actually had the engine from Back to the Future in it. If you've ever seen Back to the Future, like number three in the Wild Wild West, that was a, that was the place it was shot at and they used the equipment from that uh, train museum to film that movie. So they got a lot of that stuff there. And then they also had, you know, Roaring Camp, which is in... Santa Cruz that's the one where I drove the train uh, and it was a really cool I mean it was like a two week thing and you got charred around like buses and they had meals and hotels and stuff like that and it was pretty expensive I think it was like uh, I think it was like 3500 bucks a person but uh, you know, I really wanted to do it but it just didn't really end up working out maybe some I don't know maybe someday I kind of I kind of tried to just plan it out myself because I wanted to see how much it really cost to do one of those things versus like doing it on your own and I, I think it may it was like it was like 1500 versus like 3500 so it definitely saved some money but the convenience factor I guess you know you can you can either do it yourself and have all the work or you can let someone else do it I don't know but so they have stuff like that so be sure to check it out it's kind of cool I mean it's not I'm not paid to say any of that stuff but I just think it was a cool website and it's kind of I'm kind of glad I found it because it offers stuff that people wouldn't even really know about unless you were to search for it so all right so let's see where we are sit rep we got uh we're almost over the pass here let me start heading down all right so we got a stop at old town and a stop at uh downtown this sounds easy enough as long as we don't blow past the station again jump outside I'm really liking that dash 8 the the add-on they had it's 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 really good uh, it's really good locomotive it's actually pretty fun to drive they have some snares I think for the Miami route and uh, there's a lot of workshop routes that use it so it's not like you can't there's not a lack of uh, scenarios for this thing at all it's, start killing the power here because we're now getting over the hump which means that we're going to start picking up some speed I actually throw some dynamic brakes on here just a little bit let's just do a quick check of what our speed limits are going to be so we got 65 yeah I think we'll be alright let's actually just let me just see where we're at here Probably actually just go idle. I think we'll be okay. But yeah, like I said, this is like this is just relaxing. I mean, this is not having to like plan out a video or like I don't know worry about doing a bunch of editing. I literally just kind of take this and throw it on the internet. Like it's just simple. Sometimes simple's good. I guess I don't know. Plus, I love this route. I mean, I, I think this is my most uh, driven route. Although, I think I think the Caltrain route's going to give it a run for its money here pretty soon because that is that's my local route. I mean, I've rode on that thing multiple times in real life. I mean, uh, it's it's fun. There's there's a little bit of a lack of equipment and lack of uh, options of what you can do because they don't really run too much freight on there. So it's really just Caltrain. Now, if they extended it out 
and did the Capital Corridor out to Sacramento, then yeah, that might, you know, that would make it a little bit more interesting. But that's not something that they do, they have at the moment. I'm also waiting for, so, uh, there's a guy named Justin Highland. He, he he's a he's a developer for for transom stuff he does uh, a lot of repaints and and stuff like that but he's been working on the, uh, a route that's uh it's it's, well, it's it's basically an improvement of the surfliner route it's a surfliner it's called surfliner 2.0 and it's replacing a bunch of stuff and and uh making it more modern and more uh just giving it more getting it more like full making giving it more of a like a realistic feel not, not also, I mean, also given the fact that he's doing all the repaints for all the locomotives to make it as realistic as possible, but uh, he's been working on that for a while, and I know that there were some issues that came out where people were using his stuff without his permission, so he took a lot of his stuff that he offered down for a long time, and I think uh, I think now he's finally starting to release it again, which is awesome, because he does some awesome work, and uh, I, I can't wait for that to come out, because... It's honestly just going to make this route so much better. I mean, it extends it past, I think, San Diego even a little bit so we can do some freight stuff. He's actually doing a full trolley line in town so you can do, uh, you know, some trolley stuff if you like that kind of stuff. And, yeah, I mean, he's, he's got a lot of great work going. I think he's working on some other routes too. Um, he was the guy I mentioned if, uh, if you had watched pre previous videos that I have. He's the one that created that... Uh, the original Caltrain rail on the workshop where it was like a super super awesome rendition of San Francisco and that terminal and like everything about it it was really cool uh, and it, it, I think it went to like Menlo Park or something like that and then it kind of cut off and, and that's fine I understand if he's busy and whatever you know sometimes people don't have time to do routes like that it takes a long time to do but uh, needless to say his work's uh, very 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 good and uh, and I'm excited to to see you know the Surfliner 2 when it's completely done and hopefully you know he'll release it to the public and people can enjoy it because that's the whole point i mean you're really you're making stuff so people, everyone else can enjoy it i mean there's no point in making stuff if you're gonna really want to join it so i think he's also i'll leave a link to his uh to his website and his youtube channel be sure to go check him out maybe subscribe to him he's got a he likes to show off his uh his repaints and horns and stuff like that well they're not actually sorry i can't say that because they're not his horns uh most of the horns he gets are from the auto shack i think he works with the guy that uh, runs that place as well but, yeah, they got some good stuff, so be sure to check both those guys out. I'll leave a link to the Audio Shack, and I'll leave a link to, uh, to Justin's uh, YouTube channel, as well as his uh, website as well, so you can check that stuff out. I think he's got some repaints coming out soon. I think he's might have already sent out the Metro... Uh, maybe it's the coaster one he's already deleted, and the Metro link's coming soon. I think that's what it is. So if you're looking for those repaints that you guys saw, uh, that's where you get them. All right, let's do a little check here. We got seven miles to go. We're rolling up on a 50 here, so let's go ahead and get some braking going. Make sure we're on idle here. Make sure we are. So we got a 15 and 35, which means we're crossing tracks. So we definitely need to get ourselves down. That's a hard restriction there. train slows down pretty easily though so I'm not really worried ease off a little bit so it doesn't uh the thing too is we're also going down a grade still I think There we go. Just in time. Yeah, we're just on the outskirts of San Diego here. We're just kind of coming into the industrial side of things. And then we'll start to get into the city here shortly. When does the speed limit start going back up? Definitely not yet. Maybe it is a 35 through here. That's weird. I don't remember that. One thing I've noticed about this engine too is that when you go into when you throw your brakes on, it automatically throws in the the dynamic brake, which is interesting. I don't know if that's how it is in real life too, but it definitely helps the train slow down a little bit. 
I just don't understand why if you have the engine at idle and you uh, put the put the main brake on, why it puts the dynamic brake on. What's the point of having a dynamic brake on the engine if it's just going to do it automatically? Maybe that's just a bug or something. Oops, no, I don't want to do that. You can do a passenger view. Go to the other side. I've always noticed too that your frames actually go up when you're in passenger view, and I'm not really sure why. Maybe because there's less stuff in the in the cab. The cab maybe makes your frames go down. I don't know. But if you ever having issues with frames, go in the cab. I mean, go in the passenger view. It helps out a little bit. Jump back up here. All right, how much longer? Five miles? That's not too bad. Get our speed up to 65 and we'll hold it there. I need to get a screenshot too at some point. I think I'll do it when I get to the station. I'll actually be down in San Diego in not this weekend, but next weekend I'll be in San Diego. Flying down there for, uh, for a little trip. My girlfriend and I, we decided not to do Christmas presents this year. And just because I think that uh, in the years past, I mean, we, we obviously get each other the stuff that we want. Um, but it's usually quite expensive now. We, we both like to have, like, big items that cost a lot of money. And, uh... I think we're pretty much we're pretty much set for now. Like we don't really need anything. Like, it's just stuff that we want. So we figured we could save some money and maybe instead do like a a little trip just for the two of us to kind of get away from things and and just kind of head down to uh, the San Diego for the weekend. And I've never been down there before, um, so it'll be it'll be a new it'll be interesting for me to kind of check out the city and see how it is. I think we're gonna go to, like to the zoo one day or stuff like that. Maybe do uh, they have like a. a, a an aircraft carrier down there that uh, is retired. That's supposed to be pretty neat. Just want to make sure we're not speeding. Um, which is supposed to be pretty neat, so we'll check that out. And there's some other stuff too. I don't know. Her, she has a friend that lives down there, and you know she's gonna take some time off work and kind of guide us around and show us some cool stuff. So it'll be fun. Uh, I'm bummed. I want to go to Legoland. She was like, nah, you're too old for that. I'm like, I'm not old. I'm only 22. She wasn't having it, so we're not going to Legoland, but that's all right. That's pretty expensive anyway. I think it was like 100 bucks each to get in, so we can do like everything else we wanted to do and not even get to 100 bucks. We're not missing the station this time, guys. We got 2.3 miles to go. We're gonna we're gonna stop at this one. I like to look for reference points when I do this. 
We're at like... When I hit that signal at 0 0.44, I'm going to start slowing down. And that would be about a mile out from the station. It should be about perfect timing. Especially when I'm not driving. I've, I recently started playing this game without pl using any HUD, except for like, just to kind of check things like I am now, but... Um, I just, it's just more fun. Like, it's more of a challenge. It's more realistic. I just wish there was a way to, like, know what you're... I mean, I guess if you drove the line, a certain line enough, you would know... You would know, uh... What exactly you're, you're, you're doing and where all the speed restriction changes are and stuff like that. Like, a real engineer would, but... For people like us that just play for casual stuff... We're not just gonna know where all the... All the points in the railroad are where stuff changes and where all the stations are at and... You know, it would take a long time to figure that kind of stuff out. I slowed down really quickly. <laughs> I like to roll in the platforms about 35 or 40 miles an hour. And if you throw your blicks on at that point, you usually end up stopping about the right time. We'll just kind of stay right here for now. Are there any little... There's a... Alright, so we hit the next signal. We'll uh, let's get ourselves slow down to like 35 just to not worry about blowing past the platform. I think San Diego, or old San Diego, is actually a short platform anyway, if I remember right. This is my favorite part of the route, too, because you got, like, literally 20 crossings in, like, a five-span mile. So I'm not going to be talking too much, because I'll have the horn blast, and I hope you guys don't mind. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's take a look outside. Oh my god, that's like almost perfect. Almost perfect. Look, we're like right on the edge of the platform. I'm pretty sure that's what like a, what a normal person would do. Normal engineer. I'll keep this on because it's not going to tell us. I don't think that we're going to the next stop. And we'll end up just sitting here. Oh, it is. Okay, cool. All right, we're on our way. One more stop to go. Three miles. I, I certainly enjoyed doing this. Like I said, it's nice to kind of just kind of sit back and relax a little bit and just kind of do something just nonchalant. I guess kind of just talk about some things a little bit. Hope you guys are, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed this stuff too. If you did, leave, make sure to leave a like. Like, to be honest, uh, I didn't mean to say like, like, but just, you know, it, it makes, uh, it just kind of lets me know that I'm not just doing this for nothing. And I don't, I don't, I don't know if that sounds right the way it comes off, but like, I'm not doing it for something, like, I just do this for fun, but at the same time, like, if there's something I could do that's better, more productive with my time, like, making a different type of video that you guys would enjoy more, I would rather do that than to waste my time with something like this. And regardless, I'm going to play stuff like this on my spare time, but I just thought it'd be fun to record and share with you guys. So if you guys like it, like I said, just leave a like. It just kind of gives me a little bit of an idea, so. Also, again, if you haven't checked out my channel, I know I've already said this, but be sure to go check it out. 
you know, it only takes a second. You might find some stuff you might like on there. I mean, there's there's a lot of, like, honestly, the real fan stuff's super cool. I think you guys would really like that. Gotta be careful here because this speed restriction will sneak up on you. Goes from like 50 to 15, like that. I, I snapped my fingers, you guys didn't see it, but that's what happens. We'll just kind of idle it in. Not sure how they actually do this in San Diego, like when you're coming in downtown, if they blow their horn at every single signal. I kind of feel like they don't, but uh, I'm, actually, I'm actually curious. Let me know if someone lives in San Diego and they know, let me know because I'm kind of curious, but uh, I'm going to do it anyway because. Because the horn sounds awesome and I want to. Alright, so you guys saw we got a 15 up there. Big lag. Got our fifteen creeping up on us quickly. Yeah, that'll work. Look at that little mirror on the wall, too. That's kind of neat. Oh no, I'm speeding. Shit. It's alright. We're gonna start breaking anyway. We're gonna do our best to line up right next to the other engine too, if we can. A little bit short. That's all right. Did we clear the back end of it? Oh, uh, 
Uh, yeah, we could have gone a little bit longer. All right, whatever. Who cares? Who cares? What we got here. That's gonna be my screenshot right there. Lovely. All right, guys. Well, that is going to do it for me. I hope you guys kind of enjoyed this, like I said, a more, more laid-back video. Uh, you know, I hope to do more of these. It's fun. This is kind of like streaming without the streaming, but... Uh, yeah, I know. It's incomplete. I didn't do all the stations. I got it. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it. Uh, I'll see you later. Take care.